So this study was um, a report of the first 100 non-hospitalized COVID-19 long haulers seen at the Neuro COVID-19 clinic at Northwestern Memorial in Chicago. We opened this clinic in May 2020 during the lockdown, which was open first in televisit only, and after July 1st, both in televisit uh, and in person visit. Televisit came from all over the United States, so we had patients from more than 20 states who came to this clinic. We had full access to the clinic. Uh, we did not require a physician referral, and we did not also require a positive SARS-CoV-2 test. Why? Because at the beginning of the pandemic, as you probably remember, it was difficult to get tested even by the nasal swab um, in, if you didn't have uh, severe pneumonia in the hospital. Some patients got tested after their respiratory symptoms uh, subsided and they were tested negative. And when the first antibody tests for SARS-CoV-2 uh, became commercially available by the company Abbott, it was calibrated using a small number of patients who were hospitalized with pneumonia, and it was not calibrated to detect antibodies in patients with mild disease. So some patients tested negative even with the Abbott serology test. So uh, at the, during the time of observation between May 2020 and November 2020, we had exactly 50% SARS-CoV-2 laboratory positive coming to the clinic and SARS-CoV-2 laboratory negative coming to the clinic, but with the same exact symptoms. The population of patients is very distinct from the hospitalized patient with COVID pneumonia. These are younger patients, uh, average age was 43 years old, and 70% were women, which is interesting uh, because uh, also 16% of the patient already had an autoimmune disease before COVID. And it goes with the hypothesis that the long COVID syndrome is not a persistent infection of the brain in patients who had a mild initial disease and were never hospitalized, but rather a post-infectious autoimmune phenomenon. What we observed, and those were patients who came to the neural clinic because they have neurologic problems, obviously, uh, is that 85% of patients coming to the clinic had four or more neurological symptoms, including brain fog, headache, numbness and tingling, dizziness, disorder of smell, disorder of taste, muscle pain, blurry vision, um, and also tinnitus, uh, among others. And <clears throat> those symptoms were often associated with intense fatigue as well as cardiac, pulmonary, and gastrointestinal symptoms. So it was a mix you know, of a very complex presentation. Uh, some patients complain mainly of disorder of smell and taste that lasted for months and uh, never had the brain fog. Some per per people had only mild anosmia and dysgeusia for a couple of weeks, and then it went away, but they had the persistent brain fog, headache, and dizziness, right? However, when we ask patients uh, standardized questions uh, about the quality of life related to their cognition and fatigue using the patient reported outcome measure information system or PROMISE, um, we saw that these had uh, impaired quality of life uh, compared to a normative uh, demographic, de demographic match population in the United States. In addition, the patients who came in person in the clinic had the opportunity to do a standardized cognitive test using the NIH toolbox test for processing speed, attention, memory, and executive function. And we saw that those who were SARS-CoV-2 positive had worse results on tests of attention and uh, memory compared to also a normative population in the United States, right? In finally, we ask patients how the, what was their percentage of recovery that they felt the day of their clinic visit compared to their pre-COVID baseline and uh, an average of five months after symptom onset 
they said there were only 64% recovered, right? We were all hoping that um, the patients who were coming only one month from disease onset would say, well, only 10 to 20% recovered, and patients would come nine months from disease onset would be 80 to 90% recovered, but it was not the case, unfortunately, and time on the group population was not a predictor of recovery either for the laboratory positive, laboratory negative long holders, which was you know, somewhat concerning. In addition, uh, about half of the patients said that they had missed 10 or more days of work since the onset of their symptoms. And since there are probably millions of people with the long COVID syndrome in the US and probably dozens of millions of people in the world with the long COVID syndrome, that is likely to uh, cause a significant impact on the workforce.